Oh, we swore that we would never leave the island. The quote from Terry. Oh, so that's actually that's Yes. Okay. Yeah, so what do we like think about this one? What do you think about this one? Exhibitions like this are why it just reminds me why am I, I am an artist and why I love art. It just gets the spark in my eyes again. Like paintings like this just make me want to cry because of how they evoke feeling, they evoke emotion, they show that the artist really put time into them and effort and not only that because uh, like other artists do that as well but the way in which they do it the different lengths as to which they go the if you look at this work it's painstakingly length lengthy yeah it's definitely time consuming you can see the kind of effort she puts in it because looking at the work here it's the subject isn't like mind-blowing subject but it's the way that she deals with it. You can see the kind of intent that she has, how she's able to, even just in the simplest of, of the simplicity of cutting the paper and ripping it and, and tearing it. And she creates lines with that. So she's looking, she's dealing with the subject matter, I think heavily through the lens of elements of art, like how she's representing line. She's thinking about color. She's thinking about depth. There's one piece over there I think it's called Old Heritage, where there's so much depth in the house itself. Like you can see into the, the archway, you can see the kind of the depth, you can see the difference between the background and the foreground. And to me, like that, that's amazing. Like she's really taking the subject matter and working it and working it through the elements of art and the, um, what's the other thing? The, Principles of, yeah, the design. principles of design. Yeah, principles of design. Yeah, she's looking at rhythm. She's looking at color. She's understanding how to how to represent line, space, depth, mm -hmm. um, form as well. Color, shape. Yeah, like, yeah it's, it's amazing, amazing. You know, it's work that you could look at for hours. It's work that you want to keep in your home and just stay at. Yeah. It's work that I wanted to own, but I I couldn't because almost everything is sold out. <laughs> it's it's exciting, it's exhilarating, it's work like this I want to see more of in Trinidad. Yeah. It's work like this we wanted to see in Rotunda Gallery, it's work like I, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, get, I, I mean for me, and I'm going to say it again, I love that the subject matter isn't like, it's not, it's not anything mind blowing. So it's, it's Caribbean. Not like, yeah, it's not like you're taking like trauma and you get in, you, you know, the subject matter isn't creating the emotional attachment. For me, it's how she's able to finesse the elements of art. Mm. Like, you can see a strong understanding of line and color. And I'm going to keep saying that again, she understands the elements of art. And yes. without that understanding, you can't create great work. But the fact that she understands it, to me, you see that she understands it. It's not like by fluke. The fact that she has, how many works here? Maybe like 20, and yeah. all of them. Maybe some stronger than others, but all of them have a clear understanding of space, color, line, depth, the elements of art, the principles of design, and I love that she's able to work so much and through that. And uh, also, she understands them so well that she knows when she could break them. Mm -hmm. She knows when she could use it, knows when she can go against it, knows when she can experiment. You know, like this is such experimental work. And as you said, she's using very Caribbean themes, very, you know, like, as we said in a previous video, you know, these themes that we've seen again and again, but she's doing it in a way that, you know, we haven't necessarily seen before, yeah. you know, and it's, it's interesting. I could reference another artist that I think does this quite well. We look at Shea Loveless Works and he's going back to simple, simple, simple subject matter, yes. simple still life, coconuts, mm -hmm. palm trees, but it's his understanding of the elements of art, his understanding of the, the principles of design that he understands, like you said, they understand them so well that they're able to understand when they could break rules and yes. when they could get away with, with not applying the elements, mm -hmm. with not applying the, um, the principles. So he's another one that you could look at that simple thing as a coconut, but you get so much from it. And yes, you might get a little attachment from the coconut, <laughs> but it's how he's able to get the texture from it. It's how he's able to, like, I remember, hopefully I could find that piece and I could show you all what I'm talking about here, but one of the coconuts, it's done kind of, um, I can't remember the word, where, hopefully I remember the word and I'll just put it right here <laughs> so you'll see what I'm talking about. 
but it's like he has the coconut and it's, it's segmented and you can see different colors and textures. To me, it represents like the passage of time on that mm -hmm. one coconut. So you can look at the coconut on one side and oh, see no, it no. green. Yeah, see it it's like kind of abstracted. It's yeah. like cut into different parts. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, and yeah. you can look at another part as brown. So you can see yeah. the life and the death. You can see the time passing on that one coconut. But this is me just going to the coconut tree, painting the coconut exactly how I see yeah, it. Green. It's a difference in when you understand that you have liberty to say, you could put your interpretation of it and it doesn't need to be so representational. So that, I mean, that, those coconuts are something that I always think back to. Like, yeah. you could just, in that one painting, you could see the passage of time for that coconut versus just painting it one green or giving it one texture. And I think, again, that this is what she's able to achieve here, yeah? understanding the elements of art, the principles of design. I can't stress that enough, that yeah. she's able to break them. She could do it. She could represent something by just expressing it. She doesn't be like, hey, this is it, Rigazum. No, she mm -hmm. just expresses it, you know? She yeah. just, she doesn't have to give the full story, if that makes sense. Treasure Island is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and again, I'm, when I'm looking at the work, I'm not even, I don't think I'm thinking about what the subject matter is, like the plants. At some point, I don't care about that, but one of the first things I noticed with it is the contrast between the foreground and the background. The dark blues, the blacks, kind of juxtaposed to the greens. And it is, it's not necessarily complementary colors. They aren't complementary colors. Maybe it's somewhat of a triad. If I was to really think hard about it, I could probably figure it out. But that's, that's, that, is, that is the amazing thing to me, that I could come to the painting, see the flowers, see the background. But that is not the thing that I'm trying to solve like i'm trying to figure out what is the color the color theory going on here is it a triad what is it with like i'm trying to understand the elements because that is to me the foreground of it and maybe for someone else that doesn't understand art they're not going to understand maybe that's why they like the work but i don't think even if you don't understand the elements of art i don't think you come in here and you're like wow these flowers are so beautiful but it's the elements that kind of subconsciously telling you hey yes the foreground is in your face and the background is in the background and you can it's look amazing. at the background separate and apart from the foreground and get two different stories yeah two different stories or how she's able to kind of capture these small patterns on the leaves that can the patterns themselves reflect leaves and she's using them to create leaves or how she's able to kind of get these little pops of color on it and so it's able to draw your eye around the painting and I, Another principle I can identify in this one is movement. Oh, now yeah. that I say that, the little puffs of color kind of draw your eye around oh, the painting. The painting yeah. You can stop and look at the big chunk of background, the big, the big yeah. chunk of foreground. Yeah. So, again, it's just kind of going back to the elements and the principles. Right? I think it's so it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, my favorite one has to be freedom. There's something about that. It's almost like storytelling. Um, you can keep looking at it and keep finding more. It's almost like one of those I spy books. Um, my favorite little part about it has it has this little boy with a snow cone and it has a little cute snow cone in it. And you know, you can keep just looking at it and finding more elements to it and finding ones that overlap and underlap and you can know you can see the foreground and the background and there's something about it that just it reminds you of a storybook. You know, and it's just something that you'd love to have in your home and just look at for hours and hours and hours. There's nothing I could say about it besides it's it's beautiful. It's it's absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. That wraps it up, guys. I hope you come see this exhibition. Um, it ends uh, October 15th. So I don't think this is gonna come out before October 15th. I have other things to do besides edit this video. But at least you know where soft bucket, soft boxes. Yeah, you should visit. One. It's a really good contemporary space for contemporary art. Yeah. Nice.